Okay, today we're going to talk about the three back vowel sounds. So if you remember on your vowel chart, you have call, honest, and fathers. Say call, honest, fathers the way you normally would say that and notice which vowel sound you use. Okay, all together, here we go. Call, honest, fathers. Good, do that one more time. Call, honest, fathers. You'll notice that most likely all of you use the father sound. That is a general American speech that's perfectly legit. It's fine. It's not incorrect pronunciation to say call honest fathers using the father sound on all three of those words. However, when you do British, a, a British accent or you do the stage standard speech that we talked about earlier this semester, then you need to distinguish between those three vowel sounds. Now there are spelling rules as to which sound you use, but for now let's just work on making the sound correctly. First of all, as you go down the vowel chart, your jaw drops more, and as you go down the vowel chart, your tongue arch drops more. So when you say father, father, your jaw is the most dropped and your tongue arch is the most dropped. So you are there. It's the most open vowel sound you can make. That's the reason why when you go to the dentist, they have you do an ah sound because you drop your jaw and your tongue arch is very low. Now, when you do the call sound, your tongue arch is gonna be a little bit higher. It's almost like it's a pure O. Uh, and your jaw is more closed. It's further up on the vowel chart, so your jaw isn't down, it's up. How do you know how to do a call sound? Very simple. You do this diphthong. This diphthong is the diphthong of or, or as in horse. If you simply make that a uh, British uh, sound, you do o, 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 then you're not doing that second element and you've got the call sound. So say the word door, how you normally would say it. Door, door, door. And you'll notice that you're using this or diphthong. Door. Now say it with a British accent. Do, do, do. And you'll notice that you don't do the second element of that diphthong. Do, do, do. That's the call sound. So You'll notice that your jaw is a little more closed, your tongue arch is a little higher, and your lips are rounded. Do, o, 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 o. Your lips are rounded just like the phonetic symbol itself. O. Now, if you're doing a British, you would say cool. Your lips would be very rounded. If you're doing stage standard, you just don't round your lips as much. It's more like call, call. So the difference would be, instead of saying call, with the father sound, call, you would not say cool, which is British. It's somewhere in between, call, call. So the jaw is a little bit more closed and the lips are rounded, but not quite so much like ooh, cool. Call, call, call. Here are the spelling rules for the call sound, as in call. When it makes a sound of Oz and father and it's spelled A-L-L, -L, you use the call sound. A-L-K or A-L-T, like salt, you would use the call sound. O-U as in ought, you use the call sound. A-W or A-U. Let's just practice these words. We're going to begin the word, um, we're going to begin by saying the word do with a British accent, just to find the call sound, and then we're going to put it into these words. So you've got do call, do talk, do ought, do jaw, Door daughter. Those were a little British. So we're going to go back and do these with a little bit more American. So relax the uh, lip rounding a little bit. And we're just going to say the word. Imagine you're saying the word door, door. So you find the lip rounding and the jaw uh, placement. So you've got call, talk, ought, jaw, daughter. Okay, good. Now let's talk about the honest sound. The honest sound is a little more difficult to find because there's not really a keyword you can use to say to, to get the vowel sound. You just have to negotiate it. It's between the call and the father sound on the vowel chart. So 
your jaw is a little more dropped, your tongue arch is a little lower, and your lips are a little less rounded, and it's a very short sound. You'll notice this is a long sound, it's got dots after it, it's got the colon after it. This is a long sound, it's got the colon after it. This is not, this is a very, very short sound. And also just imagine that your lip rounding is sort of square, just like the phonetic symbol. Okay, so we're gonna practice finding this by putting it in the phrase. So you're gonna say, Cole, honest fathers. So getting that honest sound, let's do that again. Cole, honest fathers. Again, Cole, honest fathers. So again, your lips are sort of square, short sound, your jaw is not as dropped as for fathers, and it's also not as closed as for call. So it's like this, honest, coffee, orange, horror. Let's practice some words and talk about the spelling for the honest sound. You use the honest sound when it's spelled with an O. Now this is easy to remember because first of all, it obviously has to make the sound of ah as in father. But there's a lot of times the O sound makes the sound of Oz and Father, like cottage, doctor, coffee, horrible. Okay, so you don't say Kofi or cottage or doctor. <laughs> um, and if you look at the phonetic symbol, it sort of looks like an O sound. So that's how you can remember that rule. If it makes the sound as Oz and Father and it's spelled with an O, it looks like an O. So let's practice these four words with the honest sound. So remember, lips are square. Jaws dropped, very short sound. So instead of cottage, which would be the father sound, you're going to say cottage, cottage, doctor, doctor, coffee, coffee, horrible, horrible. There's a lot of words that are spelled O-R-R -R or O-R where we would tend to say horrible, forest, orange, with a call sound using the or, or, or sound, which for state standard or British, it's the honest sound. So you wouldn't say horrible, you would say horrible. You wouldn't say forest, you would say forest. You wouldn't say orange, you'd say orange, orange. Next spelling rule, if it's spelled with a W-A or a W-H-A, it makes the honest sound. So instead of water, you say water, water. If it's spelled Q-U-A, you use the honest sound. Quarrel, quarrel. So it's quarrel, not quarrel. Now let's talk about the father sound. The ah sound as in father is easy to make because it's the sound we tend to make. You use the ah sound as in father when it's spelled with an A or an A-L-M usually. So, for instance, it would be spa, pasta, saga, A-L-M, palm. Now, in these situations, you do not pronounce the L sound. It's not palm. Um, that's not quite correct pronunciation. So it's just palm, P, Oz and father, and then the M sound, palm. Calm, don't pronounce the L, calm. And believe it or not, it's not almond, it's almond. Almond. Uh, so let's just practice a few phrases using all three of these sounds. So this goes from call to honest to father. Pull wants calm. Let's do that again. Pull wants calm. You'll notice your jaw drops as you go down and your lip rounding gets less. One more time. Pull wants calm. Now let's do this next sentence. We thought the cottage was a mirage. Here we go. We thought the cottage was a mirage. We thought the cottage was a mirage. Now we're going to talk about the liquid U. The liquid U is obviously the Y sound followed by the U sound. The liquid U naturally occurs in some words in English like view, few, music, and computer. If we took that y out, it would sound like vu, fu, music, computer, which does not sound right. Now, when doing a British accent or doing stage standard dialect, there are certain words that you put a liquid U into for uh, British and stage standard that you wouldn't for American. So, for instance, 
the word Duke, we say Duke. British or stage standard dialect, you would put that liquid U in there. Duke. We would say tune. British or stage standard, you say tune. Here are some words where you wouldn't normally put the liquid U in, but if you're doing British or stage standard, you would. So instead of saying student, you would say student. Instead of saying new, you would say new, with that liquid U. Instead of saying duty, you would say duty. Instead of saying tube, you would say tube. Enthusiastic, suit, and absolute. So how do you know when to use the liquid U? There are some simple spelling rules to keep in mind. Number one, the word has to begin with a T, a D, an N, S, T, T, H, S, or L. Or, obviously, these consonant sounds can be in the middle of the word as well. So these consonant sounds, and then spelling-wise, the next sound you see would be a U, or an E-W, or a U-E. And in those situations, that's when you use the liquid U. To further highlight the spelling, Let's take a look at these words where you would use the liquid U. ST followed by EW, stew. ST followed by U, costume. T followed by U, attitude. N followed by UE, avenue. D followed by UE as in dual. D followed by a U as in introduce. So this using the liquid U would be stew, costume, attitude, avenue, dual, introduce. There are certain spellings where you would never use the liquid U. You never use the liquid U if the word is spelled with an O, two O's, or an O-U. You would also not use the liquid U in certain consonant combinations. So like a B-L, like this does not sound right, blue. It would just be blue. TR, you would not use a liquid U. There, it's true. TWO, you would definitely not use a liquid U. Two. Fruit, you see how fruit just does not work. DR, you can't say DREW or RIUD. So L's in consonant combinations or R sounds, you would never use a liquid U in those situations. So just to discuss this a little further, D-O, because it's spelled with an O, you would not use a liquid U there. It's do. However, D-U-E, you would use the liquid U. Do. So you're going to do your homework, but your homework is do. Also, there is do on the grass. Okay, so both of these would take the liquid U. And of course, you would not use the liquid U in doom, because it's spelled with an O, or soup, spelled with an O-U. So just be sure that you know when to use a liquid U and when not to use it. Now we're just going to practice doing the sound before we put it into words. So practice going from the T to the Y, T U, T U. Make sure you're not accidentally saying chew, like you're going to chew food. Make sure it's a T into the Y, T U. Let's do this three times in a row. Say T U. Q, Q. Next is du, du, du. Next is new, new, new. Next is thu, thu, thu. Next is stew, stew, stew. Next is siu, siu, siu. And last is liu, liu, liu. So say tu, diu, niu, thiu, stiu, siu, liu. Let's do that again and. You want to get to the point where it's a subtle sound. At first, you may have to say T-U, 
So it's kind of like T E U T U. So if you have to exaggerate it at first, do so. Eventually, you want to get to the point where it's subtle. Few, 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 few. Okay, keep practicing.